Items like water bottles and plastic food containers may be causing dangerous chemicals to enter our bodies. We're looking into microplastics and how it's impacting our health. You likely know every day we are surrounded by plastic. It's everywhere. It's our devices, furniture, clothes, carpets, even our cars. But it's also showing up in places where it's not supposed to be. New research shows that almost every organ in our body contains trace levels of these potentially dangerous chemicals, and there is growing concern that it's making us sick. It's early days in the study of microplastics in our bodies, but what researchers are discovering is concerning. As, as much press has already happened on this topic, I, I absolutely believe this is tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. Dr. Matthew Campin at the University of New Mexico is a leading researcher in this growing field of study. The, the reason we got into this is I'm a inhalation toxicologist. I study the, the small, small particles that we breathe into our lungs. <sighs> Laden with chemicals and toxins, this is a short list of what's in millions of everyday items. Things like polymers, additives, flame retardant, contaminants and pesticides, just to name a few of the potential hazards. And these materials can linger for decades, even centuries. And as they break down, Dr. Campen says, they get smaller and smaller, eventually turning into microscopic nanoparticles, small enough to enter our bodies. We started scratching the surface, and every time we scratched, something else popped up that was a little more alarming and, and not least of which is there are some very, very, very small plastics inside our body that have probably not been paid a lot of attention to. How small? A fraction of the size of a grain of salt. Nanoplastics are invisible to the naked eye. A human cell is in the micron range, but some of these plastics found in our bodies are even tinier than that, the size of a virus. All the talk about microplastics has sort of taken over and ignored the fact that we might not be looking deeply enough. Exactly how they get into our system is being studied, but because plastics are so common, experts believe we're simply eating them. In fact, new research shows plastics are found throughout the food supply, on farms, ranches, even in bottled drinks. We have a suspicion, we haven't shown this yet, uh, at least not in a publication, but we have a, a suspicion that the, the little nanoplastics are hijacking their way in with the fats that we absorb in our gut. And then they get distributed. The question we still haven't answered is how these contaminants are impacting our health. Last year, an eye-opening study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Researchers analyzed artery-clogging plaques for more than 250 patients and found the presence of microplastics was associated with significantly higher risk of heart attack, stroke, and death. There is the potential for these microplastics to cause damage to the lining of the stomach and lead to inflammatory changes. Dr. Philip Kuryakos is highly regarded cancer and blood specialist in Detroit. He says plastic poses a significant risk at the cellular level. It can cause problems with, say, the stem cells in the bone marrow. He too says we just don't know enough. We do need um, research that will be clearly visible to everyone and document exactly what kinds of risks are there, what quantity. We are hardwired to deal with environmental uh, conditions and, and toxins. Dr. Patrick Grant, chair of the biomedical sciences at FAU's Charles E. Schmidt College of Medicine, says the human body is remarkably resilient and adaptable to environmental changes, but even he's concerned about these toxins of our own making. Where the unknown is is when we're exposed to things that we haven't um, seen in the, you know, that aren't natural products that um, we're exposing ourselves to. These might be things that we don't have ancient mechanisms to deal with, and, and that's a little bit of the unknown. There's little argument plastic pollution is a problem, but even if we stop making the estimated 400 billion tons of plastic humanity produces each year, this stuff is already sitting in our landfills and then floating in our oceans and will continue to decompose for hundreds of years. The question is, what can we do about it? The advice typically given about plastic cutting boards and tea bags and, and uh, microwaving and plastic, that is from our standpoint, fairly trivial. And we really need to get to a point where the government is paying attention. 
And politics aside, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. currently undergoing confirmation hearings to become the Secretary of Health and Human Services. He's expressed concerns about environmental issues, including microplastics. His background as an environmental lawyer, it is likely he will be prioritizing and addressing microplastic pollution as part of his agenda. And Liz, obviously, this is one of those things where, you know, more fear and loathing, right? We, we've got so many things to worry about. This is just one more thing. And like you said, plastic is everywhere. We all use it, uh, apparently ingesting it. Is there anything we can do to limit our exposure? Uh, doctor, you just heard at the very end of that piece, talked about uh, these things are somewhat trivial, trying to reduce the amount of plastics that we use every day. So when you think about it, uh, you can take these precautions, but in the end, this is going to be one of those things where we don't fully know yet. Research is going to tell us a little bit more but you got to be aware and that's why we put this story out we want people to be aware that the problems out there and the best thing you do right now is contact your lawmakers all right